We've got a quick and to the point video for you today and it's all about power. Imagine you need to connect a few desk phones, wireless access points and security cameras to your network. They all require power, of course, but you don't necessarily want to put a big power socket next to each device. They take up a lot of space, they can look a bit ugly, and the cabling can get messy. Fortunately, we have an alternative, which is power over ethernet. That is where we supply power over a regular network cable. Any device that connects to our network that we can power using power over ethernet is called a powered device, or PD. They're generally smaller devices, like this phone, that only require a few watts of power to start. We simply connect the network cable to the back of our phone, and we'll see that it starts booting up automatically. No extra power needed. Cisco originally introduced powered interfaces over 20 years ago. It was called Cisco Inline Power, and it could deliver up to 7 watts of power per port. The maximum port speed for this standard was 100 meg. This was a Cisco only technology, so if you wanted it, you needed to have a Cisco switch. It was a pretty good idea though, so since then the IEEE has released several PoE standards that any vendor can use. The original PoE standard was 802.3AF, which is now known as Type 1 PoE. It uses two powered wires and provides 15.4 watts of power per port. Type 1 PoE is still used quite commonly and is really good for powering small appliances like desk phones and small wireless access points. You probably know that we measure power in watts. Like any power solution, there is a little power loss as power runs over the cable. It's no different with network cables. So Type 1 PoE supplies 15.4 watts at the port but it only guarantees 12.95 watts at the powered device. Just to explain this terminology a bit, any device that supplies power is called a PSE or power sourcing equipment. Any device that consumes the power is called a PD or powered device. There are some other devices that simply need more power in order to run. These include things like a four-in-one security camera, uh, tablets, LCD screens, and plenty more. So PoE Plus was developed. This supplies 30 watts of power per port. But why stop there? We now have two additional PoE Plus Plus standards called Type 3 and Type 4, and they can deliver 60 and 100 watts per port. Cisco have their own versions of these called UPoE and UPoE Plus. Most notably, these standards power up to two pairs of wires in the network cable. These higher powered standards are good for teleconferencing solutions, kiosk terminals, small switches, laptops, and small TV screens. Each of these standards is a power class. Powered devices can change their power class over time if needed. For example, a device may need only type 1 to power up. Later on it might need to turn on a screen, so it might signal a switch that needs to change to type 2, 3, or 4. The next question is, does it matter what kind of cabling we use? Yeah, a bit. It obviously has to be copper cabling. You simply can't supply power over fibre. Also, it should be no longer than 100 metres long, and ideally it needs to be Cat5e or better. But here's the really big question. Is PoE safe? Well, it is a much smaller amount of power than you would have in your average wall socket. Also, it uses DC power, not AC, which makes it much safer at small power levels. Additionally, the IEEE standard says that a PSE will only supply power to a device that requests it. So if you plug in a device that doesn't have a need for PoE, it won't get fried. So while it's relatively safe, it is still power, so you still should use appropriate caution. Don't go licking your network cables or anything like that. Although, to be fair, if you're the kind of person that licks power cables, you're probably in the wrong industry. Okay, we have a few quiz questions, but they're pretty easy in this video. I'm sure you're happy for a break.